Hello, welcome to a new video of the course. I was telling a couple of videos ago that, to download Telegraph we have to do it from the same Influx data download website. Here we have the Influx DB download and here we have Telegraph. It is done in the same way. That is, we select the version, which is the last one we have for version 2. In the platform list we have the options available for download, from Docker, Mac, Ubuntu, Linux, etc. I have selected Linux binaries. We have to do exactly the same thing that we have done with almost all the products throughout the course. First, download the software with the command wget, then unpack it and unzip it with the tar command and finally boot it, although in this case you will see that first we have to configure it. I select the command wget, copy it, and go to an operating system command line. I'm going to paste it on the command line and launch it. If I use the ls-l command, I can see that the file appears here with the name Telegraph and the version we have downloaded. Now to unzip and unpack it, just like we did before, we use the tar xvf command followed by Telegraph file. Now it is going to generate a directory, which I am going to rename to handle it more easily. So, I'm going to use the mv command with the Telegraph directory, and I'm going to call it Telegraph. Okay, I'm going to clean up here and I'm going to go inside the directory Telegraph. Here we have other directories. We have the usr directory, where the bin directory that stores our telegraph executable will be. But before we can launch the executable we have to configure it. That is, we have to configure the necessary options so that it can be recognized by a influxdb server. We have to modify a configuration file. Where is that configuration file located? It is located within the etc directory and, within the etc directory, in another directory called telegraph. I go inside that directory and I can see that there is a file called telegraph conf. I'm going to edit it. By the way, I always talk about it in my courses. I'm using Vi Editor because it is the one I usually use, but you can use Nano or any other editor you're more comfortable with. Well, once inside, we can see that the file is divided into blocks. These blocks are a functional unit with corresponding properties. I'm going to look for one block called InfluxDB, which is where we're going to set up the connection between this telegraph and the InfluxDB server. It is located here, to give you an idea, just in case you do not locate it easily. It is located approximately on line 340. Can you see that it reads output plugins? I told you, in the course presentation, that telegraph is not a vulgar collecting agent, but contains a lot of plugins, of input type, output, modification, etc. That is, it is much more powerful than, so to speak, Prometheus node exporter, which was a simple collecting agent. Telegraph is more than that, as it can be configured in many ways to connect with products other than InfluxDB. Here we have a block where it reads, configuration for sending metrics to InfluxDB 2.0, so what I have to do is modifying some of these properties. First of all, the most important property, the URLs that we are going to use to send the metrics. We can have more than one InfluxDB server collecting these metrics. I'm going to leave this as it is because it's perfect, because since I'm installing everything on the same machine, this IP will work. It is the local IP of the machine. But you should add here the IP address or the name of the server to which you are sending the information of the metrics. The next property we need to change is called token. The token is the one we have copied in the InfluxDB installation. You should have copied it when we started setting up InfluxDB. Remember that one of the things I did was generate a token that I recommended to copy into a file. This is the property where we now have to paste it. Some of you will say, hey, I forgot copy the token, I don't know where it is, what can I do? Well, very simple. I can generate other token. If we go to the InfluxDB server website, here where it reads sources, buckets, telegraph scrapers, and API tokens, we have the possibility of generating a new token. Here I have the token that I generated at the beginning, when I intalled the product. If I click on, Generate API Token, and I select, Generate All Access API Token. It will inform me that this token will be able to configure, delete, etc. I will name it, for example, Test. Here, it shows me the token again, remember to copy it somewhere because you won't be able to see it again. Copy it and use it within the telegraph configuration file. Well, continuing with that configuration file, here we are going to specify which organization we want to work with. 
I created one called Opposoft in Influxdb. Therefore, that is the one we must write here. Further down we have the destination bucket. Remember that I created one called Apposoft bucket. That's the one we have to write on this property. You have to enter, obviously, the data that you have configured when you have created the InfluxDB database. And in the rest of the properties don't have to add anything. Of course, when you're working in real life, you should look at all these properties carefully to check that it works correctly and that you can configure it as you want. But, for now, this is enough. Well, and one last thing is missing. I suppose many of you have already noticed, but this is all commented. In other words, these properties must be uncommented. First of all, we uncomment the InfluxDB output block. We need to remove the comments for URL, token, organization, and bucket. That is, you have to uncomment these lines, because otherwise, when telegraph is executed, nothing will apply. That is, all this has to be uncommented. Once we have it, we exit the file. Remember that, right now I am in this directory, in telegraph slash etc slash telegraph. We have to go one step further before we can launch our telegraph. This file has to be copied to another location because, by default, telegraph looks for the configuration file either in the slash etc slash telegraph directory or in the point telegraph directory of the user's home directory. So, I go to the home directory of this user I'm working with, which in my case is called slash home slash grafana. I create a directory here called dot telegraph with the command dir. For those of you who don't know Linux, if I use the command ls minus l, the directory doesn't appear, and it's because the files or directories that start with a dot are not visible. I have to write the command ls minus la. Now I can see it in the list of files and directories. So, what I have to do is copy the configuration file I have modified into this directory. I use the command cptelegraph slash etc slash telegraph slash telegraph dot conf and copy it to the dot telegraph directory. If I enter in the directory point telegraph, I can already see my telegraph configuration file. I leave this directory and enter into the usr slash bin directory of telegraph with cd telegraph slash usr slash bin. If I use the ls-l command, I can see that I only have the executable for telegraph, and all I have to do is write point slash telegraph. If we haven't made a mistake anywhere and we have the right settings, it will correctly start. And now it is, let's say, sending the information to InfluxDB. If we go to the InfluxDB website and go here where it reads Data Explorer, a list of buckets appears. We select the bucket that we created at the time of install the software and here I can apply filters by certain metrics. For example, I can come here to check if it's listening to the metrics for node 2, which is what my Linux machine is called. So, I'm going to select, for example, the host filter. You see that node 2 comes out, so Grafana is receiving metrics from that server. I click on node 2 and it will show me information I can search for within that machine, for example, the free filter. Once inside free, I select the MEM property. Once I have selected the memory, if I click on submit, the graph of free memory that this machine has at the moment will appear. In this way we can check that we have our node working on the machine and with the correct configuration. Well, I hope you liked the video, see you in the next one.